In this video, we want to speak about the role forming component. Here you can get some good information so keep in watching this video to the end. And for getting more information don't forget subscribe us. In this video, we introduce mill bed, stance, shafts, powertrain and roll forming machine. The mill base sometimes called bed, supports the stance, shafts, rolls, drivetrain, and the components needed to form the sections. The most important requirements for the base are rigidity during operation, transportation, and installation. Smooth, level top surface for installation of the components. A keyway or other component to be used for aligning the stands. Drainage for the roll forming lubricant. Long mill bases may have to be split into two or more sections to accommodate machining, handling, and transportation. If the base is split, if the extension is anticipated, or other units are to be attached to it at a later date, then additional plates and joining fixtures have to be mounted to the joining end of the mill bases. Mill bases must be capable of accommodating recirculated lubricant used during forming. In the case of split bases, Attention has to be paid to providing recirculation to each base section and to making a watertight joint between the bases. In most cases, the base also supports the drivetrain. The gearboxes that drive the stands are very seldom mounted on a separate base. Standard mill base design does not exist, but most beds are similarly constructed either from plates or from tubular sections. The upper surface of the top plate is either fully machined or is machined only along the longitudinal edges where the stands and gearboxes are mounted. An alignment keyway is machined in the full length of the top plate. Stands. In most cases, the drive side stands are exposed to considerable forces and bending moments. The operator side stands are exposed to lesser forces. They usually support the shafts through needle bearings and long bearing sleeves. As a result, there are no forces acting on the stand in the axial direction of the shaft. The outboard stands are fastened with one or two bolts to the mill base. The latter two take the shortest time to remove and install the stands. The vertical forces are contained by the vertical legs of the stands. The forming resistance, the uncoiler brake, the changing roll perimeter speeds, and occasionally the jamming of the strip create horizontal forces in the direction of strip travel. These forces are accentuated by the torque of the drivetrain. To withstand the resulting stresses, the drive side stands must be sturdy and well anchored to the mill base.
Both sides' stance have to be sturdy enough to withstand the shaft's separating forces. These forces are occasionally multiplied by incorrect setup or missteps such as double or triple strip thickness, or foreign materials forced through the rolls. Shafts. The construction of the cantilevered shafts and the operator side of the two end supported shafts are similar. However, to save space, the rolls on the cantilever shafts are frequently held by the countersunk screws, threaded into the center of the shafts. Shafts can be driven by spur gears, chains, or universal joints. In these cases, the top and bottom shafts can be identical except the operator side threads at the end of the shafts. Experience shows that if all threads are right-handed, then the nuts either at the top or at the bottom level shafts will become loose. To avoid this problem, all the shafts at one level have right-handed and at the other level left-handed threads and nuts. The direction of thread is always opposite to the direction of shaft rotation. That is, if during roll forming, the shaft rotates counterclockwise, then right-handed nuts are required. If the shaft rotates clockwise, then the nuts must be tightened counterclockwise. This requirement makes the mill unidirectional.
Road forming lines are usually powered by electrical motors. In very few cases, mills are driven by hydraulic motors. Most hydraulic motors are powered by hydraulic pumps driven by electrical motors. Occasionally, the pump is driven by a diesel engine, as with the case of truck-mounted lines working at remote job sites. Most of the older types of roll-forming mills were equipped with single-speed AC motors. The powertrain usually consisted of a V-belt drive from the motor to the mill and individual gear reducers. For each stand, in low-cost models, chains or chain, gear combinations have been used for speed reduction and power transfer. Occasionally, a single-speed gear reducer box was installed between the electrical motor and the mill.